Hi there. In this video, we're going to be deriving the standard error of beta hat least squares. For now, we're going to be doing it in the presence of serially correlated errors. Okay, so just to make this derivation a little bit more intuitive, I'm going to assume a particular error structure for my um, covariance between my errors. And that's going to be that the covariance of error ut with some error ut plus j. And note that I'm using t here rather than i, because normally when we're thinking about serial correlation, we're thinking about serial correlation through time. And I'm going to say that this is equal to rho to the j times sigma squared, where rho is less than 1. Um, and this is actually this sort of um, covariance structure and errors, which you would get if the errors were following an AR1 process. And don't worry if you don't understand any of this sort of stuff which I've written over here. Um, we're going to come on to consider it in the future when we look explicitly at time series. But I just wanted to include some explicit form for the error structure, um, just, just so that it's going to make our derivation a little bit more intuitive. Okay, so just thinking what we got to, um, or what we used to simplify our variance of beta hat given xt, we had that this was equal to the variance of the sum of t equals 1 to t of xt minus x bar times ut, all divided by s, s, x. And then in the presence of no serial correlation, we were able to forget about the sort of covariance terms, which would sort of come about if we did have some correlation between our errors. Um, before we go ahead and start manipulating this, um, this term, I'm just going to make a further sort of simplifying adjustment, which is that we're going to assume that x bar is equal to zero. That doesn't fundamentally change the sort of intuition for what's going on in the situation. Um, we could sort of think about our, ourselves as transforming to a situation whereby in the new coordinate system, um, the mean of x was zero. So it's fine. It doesn't change anything. It just makes the maths a little bit easier, to be honest. Okay, so in the presence of serially correlated errors, we can think about expanding this term out as sort of our thing that we got originally. So we had sort of sigma squared over s, s, x. Um, but then we're also going to get a sort of term here which contains our, our sort of covariance structure. And it's going to be a double sum over xt with xt plus j where the sort of outer sum is going from t equals 1 to um, t minus 1, and the inner sum is going from j equals 1 to t minus t, and a little t minus little t. And it also in sort of this term, we're going to have the sort of expectation of ut with ut plus j. And this term on the right, it actually is the covariance between ut and ut plus j because um, we have that u bar equals zero. Okay, and also we're going to need to divide this whole term on the right hand side by our um, SSX all squared. So we've got this sort of whole term being divided by SSX all squared. Okay, cool. And I have sort of already stated a form for this um, actual expectation, this covariance term on the right hand side. So I'm going to replace that with what I actually said it was originally, which was uh, we had this whole thing being equal to uh, rho to the power j times sigma squared. Um, this is just this thing at the top here. So the sigma squared goes outside. Okay, so I know it seems like a lot of maths and what, what have we got out at the end? Well, we've got that the variance of beta hat given xt um, is equal to a sort of variance of beta hat given xt if we have no serial correlation plus this term on the right hand side and a sort of obvious question to ask is what what sign does this question what sign does this sort of um, second term actually take well normally it's the case that if we're looking at our errors and we sort of had a graph of our sort of errors against time then it's normally the case that our errors sort of, if, if we do have serial correlation, we normally have sort of runs of positive errors followed by runs of negative errors. And another way of stating that mathematically is essentially that this rho j up in this sort of above um, explanation of the covariance structure of errors is greater than zero. Um, so if this rho j is greater than zero, this whole term on the right hand side is essentially going to be greater than zero. So this actually leads us on to a very important um, sort of conclusion about um, our variance of beta hat in the presence of serially correlated errors, 
Well, if we went with um, the original variance, which we derived for beta hat in the presence of no serial correlation, this would likely understate the value of the true variance of beta hat because of the fact that we have this sort of term on the right, which is greater than zero. And that's a really, really serious um, flaw with going with the original standard error because of the fact that essentially that would allow, that would make us think that our estimates of beta hat were that much more um, precise than they actually were. So that might actually lead us to conclude that a variable was statistically significant when in fact it wasn't. So that's the real problem with um, using this sort of serial correlation non-robust standard errors. Um, opposed to using the sort of robust one which contains this sort of term on the right here. And um, it's really important when we are estimating the variance of beta hat that we do include some sort of estimate of this second term here. Because, it, because if we don't, our, our sort of inference about the population is likely to be very misguided.